Hello, it's the first stream of what's now 2024. It's uh, January, but um, I'm going to still think it's 2023 for a little while, I guess. So what are we doing today? Um, I've on the stream previously been doing a lot with the Piper Maker Advent Calendar. We finished that one and managed to get it done all before Christmas, so in a relatively timely fashion. And um, what I did with that in the end was I put that kit up for sale and somebody bought it um, for a, a bit less than it cost. And um, they're gonna hopefully have some fun with it and build it themselves. So we're moving on from that. And what I wanted to do on today's stream was also some MicroPython, but look at some devices that I've had for quite a long time and not actually done anything with. And excuse me, while I just put the light on, I forgot. So we can put a light on here, um, which will help when we look at the device on the desk. Uh, I've also made some changes to the desktop setup. So the um, the second camera is now the same as the main camera that's up there. Uh, it's not an older unit like it used to be. That actually causes some minor issues um, in that they're both the same make and model. They're both a Logitech Brio 4K something or other. And they're not running in 4K. The software supports 1080. Um, but they've got better zoom than the previous camera. But because they're both the same thing, the same model, and they're both plugged into the same computer, the Logitech control software sees them as the same device, which is a bit weird. So when you go to control it um, and change the zoom, on the camera you can't distinguish between the two before um, this seems to be a general problem and you can't change the name of the cameras so i might have to think about that long term but short term it's okay i mean look if we had the the second camera here i've got this automatically set up to zoom so you can see my hand is quite massive this is the device we're going to be playing with today um and it is quite small i've actually got uh, two of them and you can see how far zoomed in we are because uh, you know there, there's not a lot of room to, to show both of them. But uh, that's the device we're going to be playing with today. We'll come to that in a moment. Let's just remove that. So yeah, happy new year, everybody. Hopefully um, you're having a good one. Here it has been raining like you wouldn't believe for a very long time. The rivers burst its banks. The nature reserve car parks flooded. All sorts of stuff is flooded. But today it appears to be dry and sunny. So might actually see the outside world i don't know um, it's been a lot of uh, doing stuff around the house because it's very very wet um didn't really do much on project things over the holiday period i did build that lego kit behind me uh, the little creator shuttle that i found in little one morning when i was going for breakfast and i made a video about that which is just like one of those here it is done quick uh, with some music and i'm slowly putting an article on my website about that so if you're interested in that it'll eventually appear down here on the website um if you're watching this on youtube the, the video is already on the channel it's just got no explanation or accompanying uh accompanying text or link to the website just yet i haven't finished the article uh so maybe i'll do that although with it being nice weather probably get outside instead uh, right, so anyway, back to the point. So what we're going to do today, we're going to try and do something with MicroPython on a tiny, tiny, uh, it's an ESP32 type device from M5 Stack, who make all sorts of IoT controllers and components that literally stack onto each other. Um, this one is slightly different. It's a smaller form factor than their usual stuff, which makes it really, really cheap and quite approachable. And I've had two of them for some time. This is one of them. So for scale, that's me and my hand, and, and this is how small it is. It has a USB-C and a Grove on the back. It's got some pins we can use there. And what this sort of dark area here is, is it's actually a 25 LED matrix, and they're more colored. And that's a button. It's a plastic sort of screen. The whole front is a button, so we can use that as an input and an output. And it's got Wi-Fi, um, and it's set up to be programmable through Arduino. So 
I'm going to go ahead and move some stuff out of the way and we can have a look at their shop uh, shop page for this. And let's just move. I've got a few things going on here. Let's move this out of the way. And also, the way I've changed the camera, the camera is the second camera is now on an arm that points out directly over the desk. It used to be on a tiny tripod. That arm kind of gets in the way of the second screen. So this is definitely a work in progress. We are going to have to uh, to think about this. But let's there we go. Add the um, the desktop in. What you can see here is the uh, the M5 stack product page for this. It's available if you're in the UK. I'm pretty sure Camera only sells these. I'm pretty sure I got that's where I got mine from. But it was some time ago now. Uh, and you can see it here with its with its lights turned on. And we can see here that there's a button inside the screen and it's five by five RGB sort of matrix in there. Also, I forgot to mention this MPU6886. It's a sort of gyroscope accelerometer. So we can tilt this and be told, you know, what angle we're tilting and, and what speed we're being tilted at. And that's something I want to look at on a subsequent stream. Not going to have time for that one today. So I'll schedule another one where we look at how that tilt feature of this device actually works. So yeah, these things are um, $15.50. And um, uh, let's just have a quick look and see what that translates to in, um, in pounds. They're out of stock at the minute, but 15 pounds, 90p. Uh, if you live in the UK. So um, the great thing about Pimeroni is if you want to know if they've got something back in, you can register for that and they'll tell you about it. Um, so yeah, you could buy it from here if you're in the UK. You could buy it directly from uh, from M5 as well. So this is the device. It comes with um, a nice documentation site. So you can see it here with multicolored things going on. You can see the same diagram about what's happening here. It's tiny, so it's 24 by 24 millimeters. So uh, I don't know about an inch if you're uh, if you're working in Imperial, or 2.4 centimeters, 24 millimeters. If you like metric, um, it's a square. It's very, very, very small. And yeah, like I said, it's got an ESP32. It's got this programmable button that is the actual screen, the LED matrix that we're going to use and the inertial sensor. Uh, and it says here you can program it with Arduino or UI Flow, which is like a graphical thing that M5 stack have going on. Um, you can also program it with MicroPython, and that's what we're going to do. So yeah, you can see some pictures of it here. Um, what's interesting, and I guess is gonna be more common with these devices is, in this one I've had for over a year, um, is on the bottom here, it's USB-C. So the big thing, the white thing at the bottom is a Grove connector. The black thing is USB-C. So if you've got a big stock of USB-A to micro USB cables, they're not going to be useful for this device. You are going to need some sort of USB-C connection. And um, I'm using, a, I don't know, it's about four-year-old iMac to do this with that's got some USB-C ports on the back and it's actually handy that there's something that doesn't require USB-A for a change so um, we are uh, yeah, we've got a port on the back of the Mac for this I don't have to plug in a port extender and then mess around with USB-A's so it's a USB-C cable I've got one just let's add the device back in so you can see it yeah. I've got one kicking around here, and um, what we can do is just basically plug that in and power it up, and absolutely nothing is going to happen for now. And I'm actually going to take some handy blue tack here and just hold this in one place on the map because otherwise it's going to flex around and move. So there we go. So hopefully that will stay there through out most of the stream if it moves around we'll fix it but uh yeah so they've got a documentation site and i didn't really want to do arduino programming with this i wanted to do micro python 
And if we go over to the MicroPython uh, website here, let's just so we can enlarge the text. They have a whole set of pages for devices that are supported by MicroPython. And one of them is luckily the, the thing that we've got here. So what you see is his picture of it, same device. And we've got instructions here for how to install MicroPython. So this is an ESP device. There's a, a Python script called ESP tool that's generally useful for this sort of stuff. Uh, it's available on uh, GitHub here, and it's pretty well documented. But what I found in playing with this is generally the instructions on the MicroPython site here are pretty good. So what we need to do is first put the thing in a good known state, erase the flash, and then we need to write some firmware to it. So let's have a look at that. Um, and then down here, we've got all the releases of MicroPython that have been built for it. So 122 is the latest, uh, just after Christmas. I think I've downloaded 121 already, so we'll run with that. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing. Um, and the way this device connects is it connects as a sort of virtual USB device. So we need to find out what its port ID is. And let's do that. So I've got a command line here. So what we need to do is have a look for uh, dev TTY. I'll just do TTY star at the minute and see if we can find it. So a lot of these are unrelated things. So there it is. So it's dev TTY USB serial 79529. And that's like a unique ID for this device. Um, that's actually what I could do with for these two cameras. They, they both present as the same ID, which is why the software can't tell the difference between them. But uh, this little ESP gets it right. And we have a unique device ID. So given that, what we can do is run ESP tool and put the, um, put the thing into like a known empty state to start with. So I'm going to steal this command here, and it's a Python thing. So let's do esp tool.py minus uh, minus pip esp32. So the one we've got minus minus port is the one that I had pasted, and then erase flash. Erase flash. Okay, so off it goes, and it's erasing the flash. So we're just putting it into a known good state. There we go. It's done that. It didn't take long. 0.9 seconds. So now what we need to do is um, install a MicroPython runtime on it. So this is like a, a sort of C program that enables MicroPython to run on the device. And MicroPython for individual devices may have some like helper classes or functionality for the specific device, but always has like the core Python base. So we can expect to get, in this case, um, libraries for dealing with the network because we've got Wi-Fi. And there's also a helper class for dealing with the button and the LEDs, and we'll look at that. So I need to get, I've got one of these firmware files already. So I need to run something that looks a bit like this. Um, I actually found when I was practicing this that specifying this board rate for this specific device doesn't work, but omitting it completely seems to. Um, and what we're doing here is we're basically telling it install the, the image at a given uh, address in the firmware, and then it will reboot and run whatever we've installed there. That will be MicroPython, and then hopefully we can get a REPL up and, and try some Python. So let's try the, the bigger command here. So again, we need this uh, this thing here. So we're going to do uh, Python 3, ESP tool.py, minus minus chip, ESP32, and we've got minus minus port. Uh, that one, I'm going to leave that board rate clause off of there because I found it messed it up for this board. Right flash minus Z. 
out at 1000 where we're going to put it and then i've got this file in my downloads folder and it is called let's just check the notes it is called it begins with m5 stack so let's do there we go so i got um 121 oh okay so it didn't like that so what do we got wrong here so esp2 minus minus chip esp32 minus minus port the port right flash oh for some reason i put minus x 1000 not ox 1000 well, there we go but so there's a proper address okay so it's often doing that so it's writing the micropython runtime to the board and we won't see the board do anything when it's finished it's just um it's just gonna have micropython on it and we'll see how to get to a REPL with that in a second so it's 17, 18, 19, 20% done. It's gonna take a moment to do this. So while it's doing this, let's have a look at this page here. So see up here, there's this source on GitHub. So we can look at what MicroPython's got for this specific device. So if we go here, um, you can see there's an M5 stack Atom folder, and then there's a module in here. And then there's something called atom.py. Let's make this a bit bigger. And this, let's make it even bigger. This appears to be like a helper class that's built in for this device. So we've got something that uh, defines where the LEDs live, you know, what pin on the device they're connected to and the button and all of that. And then we've got a class for this device and it seems to have functions in here that we can get the button status or set a callback and do some event driven programming with the button, um, set an individual pixel, get the color of a pixel or, or set all of them. And then we've got the matrix version of this product. So there's like a specialization of that class that just says, oh, okay, this is an Atom device and it has 25 LEDs on its, uh, on its screen. So, we're going to be able to use this without having to write much lower level code to interact with some of the features of this device without doing a lot of work. So one thing I noticed that's missing in this class is there's no uh, dealing with the potentiometer accelerometer gyroscope thing. So we'll have to look at that separately in another stream. I'm not sure why there isn't code for that, like whether it's MicroPython philosophy that that sort of stuff doesn't belong in here because it's built into this device and this is a build for this device or whether it's just nobody's got around to it yet. So I might try and find out and see if uh, see if that could be improved because the great thing is this stuff's open source. So you can do a pull request on it and um, you know, if people agree that it's a good thing to do, then, then maybe it'll get accepted. So this is our code that we can mess around with, but back to here. So we're done and it's hard reset here and you can see the device below me absolutely nothing's happened so what i'm going to try and do is run the micropython remote command and what that does is it'll basically show us what's running on there and display the logs or it'll start a REPL if nothing is running so let's try that out and you can see it's connected and i've got a REPL prompt so i can do python stuff so we can do you know basic stuff like three plus four equals seven and we're running on that little device down there or print uh, does that work don't know yeah it does okay so we can do python stuff um we've got a REPL. we've got a micropython environment on here and if we type i think it's help it will tell us a lot of things about that so for example how to basically connect to a Wi-Fi and we'll, we'll look at that later. So what I need to do now is just quit out of that. So we've installed MicroPython on this tiny little board and absolutely nothing interesting has happened. So I guess the obvious thing we wanna do is start messing around with writing some code using this class here and having, you know, like, ability to mess around with that leds so 
I've practiced this before. Don't think I'm like live coding this from absolute scratch. And what I've got here is the Thony IDE, so a basic way of writing code and running it on these devices. And we're going to connect to this device and see if we can get the REPL on it. There we go. So we've got the same deal as we just had in MP Remote. We can, the thing to make this bigger is a little bit arbitrary. There it is. Uh, you know, we can still run like three plus four and get seven. Um, we can also now write code up in this space here and then send it to the device or store it on the device as a file. And we can see files that are on the device. So here we've got boot.py. That's something that the um, image put on there and it's all commented out. It's not doing anything. So I'm just going to delete that don't want that so that's cleared the device completely so i think that the micropython runtime put on there are gone it's just a bare runtime now and the way this works is we can either write code up here and just send it to the device and execute it or we can save it as a file on the device and if we call the file main.py it's just going to run that when it when power is applied so yeah, when we're happy with what we've got, we can call it main.py, save it on the device. And you can put other files on that and, and import them like you would you know, in regular Python. So what we need to do now is actually make the device down there do something. So let's, um, <coughs> excuse me, the voice is not warmed up a little bit. Um, let's do the sort of basic, get all the LEDs to do something. So. That class here was called, uh, well, it's called Atom. There we go. And it's going to be built into the uh, into this system. So we should be able to, I'll make the, let's do it in the REPL. Make the REPL a bit bigger here. So if we do import Atom, that didn't fail, sorry. Atom dot, and we had a class called Matrix for this one. So Matrix. And then what we want to do is there was a method for setting all of the pixels to a color. So set pixels color R, G, and B. So if we do a dot set pixels color, um, let's do these are like 0 to 255, but also these LEDs are bright. So we don't want to flood the camera with light now hopefully if i've done this correctly what we'll see is that our little device when i hit return everything goes red so it's a nice um gentle shade of red that's not flooding the camera equally if we move the 16 around you can expect it to go green and finally i guess blue so we're executing code here in Thony, it's running on MicroPython directly on the little device there, and we're you know, interacting with the the matrix of LEDs. So we've got all of them on there. Let's turn them off by setting them to zero. So that's good. We've got pixels that work. We can show colors, um, and we control individual ones, uh, probably. So let's have a look at that. So there was some code here for where is it set pixel color number r g and b so we've got 25 pixels here so what we need to do is let's try a dot set pixel singular color and let's do number so zero in this case and let's set it to red r g and b see what happens so we've got that top left one. So that's pixel zero. What about if we do a random number like pixel eight? And let's set that to green and see what happens. Okay, so eight is somewhere in the second row. So the way that this works is it's Underneath, it's using this NeoPixel library that is part of, here we go, that is part of um, MicroPython. That library and the way that these things are built doesn't understand how they're laid out. So it just sees them as a big chain of pixels, right? So zero is the first one, and 
in that case, 24 should be the 25th and final one. So let's set that to blue. And then, yeah, we get that in the corner. So these are essentially, as far as the code's concerned, in a big straight line. So 0 to 24. We don't know that they actually wrap. So if we turn, what we could do is turn on number 5 and see where that shows up. So let's make that like yellow or something. There we go. So number 5 is the first pixel on the second row. So they go one, not one, two, three, four, wrap around to the next row, five, and so on. So it's a bit like somebody's just drawn them out. So they don't go like this. So the second row isn't, you know, five is the rightmost, six is the one in. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So they're all connected to a big, long line, and we can control them individually. So that's good. And um, now we've got some of them turned on. So what else can we do? We could mess around with having some code that calculates x, y values and you know, plots them a bit more like a, what you would normally expect to be a matrix. You know, let's plot 0, 2. So I'm going to switch to using the editor for that and just show we can do this. So let's do, we're going to import Atom again, make the editor. There's like a sweet spot for grabbing this. Make the editor a bit bigger. We're going to want a matrix. 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 Again. And we are going to want to. Let's call it set pixel color X, Y. And we're going to want an X and a Y and an R and a G and a B. And. That and then what we're going to do is set pixel color x y. Let's do uh, zero zero sixteen uh, zero zero. So the first one red. Uh, set pixel color x y, and we're going to do two two, and we'll make that I know green. And let's do a third one. Pixel color x y, and let's put that at three four and make it blue. So just stick with the simple colors for now. So we need to write this, but also what we need to do first is just turn everything off. So let's just do a dot set pixels color o. I to turn everything off. Probably best that we put that in our code. So whatever state we were in when we started with, we go to a known state. So turn everything off. And now in order to put something at an XY position, we need to work out where that is. So we need to translate X1 into what we'll call N, so a number of pixels along the chain, and the chain begins with zero. So if we think about it, um, there are five across in this case, and um, the Y positions start at like zero, five, so on. So we need whatever the Y value is, times five, and then we need an offset into that row, which would be the X position. So starting at zero through to four. So something like that. And then what we should be able to do is a dot set pixel singular color. And then we want the number because this doesn't understand x, y coordinates. It just understands the chain of pixels. And then r, g, and b. So maybe something like that. So what we can do now is try running this. And press the big play button up here. And you'll see it's rebooted, and we've got some pixels lit up. So let's just check if they're the right ones. So red, 0, 0, top left. Uh, green, 2, 2. So that should be the second row, or the third row down, because it's 0, 1, 2, and the third one in. So basically the middle, yep, so that looks OK. And then blue, 
third position across. So that's the fourth one on line four, which is the bottom one. So, okay, yeah. So we've got a bit of a function that does that. Um, that itself might be useful to add to this MicroPython thing because this is specifically for this device and the LEDs are always configured in, in this order in that device. So I might look at seeing if I can get a little pull request in that does that does this. Um, but I might try talking to somebody about what is acceptable in these board files first, because I don't know uh, what the what the guardrails for that are. So we'll see. Um, oh. And uh, hello, Matt. So uh, yeah, this is Matt who works on MicroPython. Um, he's down in Australia. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what the, uh, the guardrails for how much specificity, is that a word, goes into these, these board files. Um, but it might be cool in this one to put something that does like an X, Y, and maybe the accelerometer, but that may or may not add other dependencies, I don't know. That's for another stream. I think that's an ITC device, but anyway, so not quite on a, on today's topic. So yeah, we can control these things individually and we can control them X, Y. So we could build like a game with this or something like that. Um, and we've got network and we've got a button and we've got the accelerometer. And what I wanna do when we look at the accelerometer is you know, basically build something that I've nailed it to the desk with Bluetech. Build something that when we take this this guy and tilt it, the you know dot on the screen moves around to where it's been tilted. So it's like sort of a marble in a box or something. Um, we'll see what we can build with that. But okay, this is kind of all good. But it focuses on the output side of the house. We also have some inputs in this device. So we have a button, and this class here has a set button callback. Um, and that handles the actual hardware implementation. So all we have to do is provide a function that runs when the button is pressed. I guess we don't really need any parameters. We probably get the pin or something. And we can basically do something. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this code that sets LEDs. And let's just put the device back into, well, I don't need to put it back into a good state because we already put the code there that does that. And what I'm going to do is have a look at implementing the button callback, which should be really easy as well. So what we want to do is um, a dot set, was it button call? Button callback, yeah. Okay, intuitive. A dot set button callback. And we want to set that to, um, let's call it button press, and then we're going to have to write button pressed. So, you know, that button press, what happens here? And I think from memory, you do get a pin number. It's not really relevant because there's only one button, but, you know, we'll demonstrate you can do something with it. So, when the button's pressed, we want to print the pin number. And that will appear on the um, on the record. So hopefully this works. So okay, nothing's happened on the device over there because we haven't got any code to turn the um, turn the LEDs on. But if I press this, you can see there I'm getting some feedback. I'm getting pin thirty nine. Looks like it's not actually the pin number. It looks like it's a pin uh, object. So that also says boards can have a fair bit of custom code. Okay. Python stuff is easier. So maybe I'll try doing a little pull request that adds like this thing because we know that the layout of those NeoPixels is always the same on this board and it just makes writing things a little bit easier. Um, less boilerplate -y. So maybe I'll try that and see uh, see how that goes as, a, as an experience. Okay, so we've got a button and it's actually a pin object. So we'll rename that a little bit and you can see that we get a pin. Um, and what I've done here is I've just hit Command S. So when I hit Command S, which probably shouldn't have done, uh, Thony tells me where do I want to save it. So I can save it directly to the device and give it a name. We'll come to that in a bit. I don't want to do that just now. So I'm going to hit Escape. So what do we need to do? Um, 
let's make the button do something with the LEDs because those are like the two things we've got going on here. We can control some LEDs with a button and then we've got a really basic light, light or something. So what I'm gonna do is all the colors on this are RGB. So let's create some colors. And the first one I'm gonna create is called off. So let's use tuples, tuples. But, uh, I'm gonna say off is everything in zero. We're gonna say red is let's do 16, zero, zero. And I'm gonna say green is zero, 16, zero. So I've got some colors defined here. We can replace that with um, this. We can't just do that because that's gonna pass the top line and this expects R comma G comma B. So we need to kind of unpack it by doing that. So um, look that up if you need to, but basically that's gonna unpack the top line to the three parameters. And let's just run that and make sure that bad things don't happen. So, okay, we're good. So now what we need to do is, um, let's basically toggle the LEDs. So when you press it, it's gonna go one way or the other. Um, and what we want to do is, let's just keep a, uh, some sort of variable. So LED state, let's say not. And what we're going to do here is we could probably do this more efficiently, but if LED state equals naught, then we are going to um, a dot set pixels, is it set pixels color? Yeah, pixels, we'll set all of them. We're not going to use, not going to use this code here, but we'll keep it there. Set pixels color to red, I suppose. And, Otherwise, set pixels color to, I don't know, green would be good because that's the other color we've got. And then let's set um, LED state to zero in this case and set it to something else. So if it's not, then it's gonna go to one and so forth. Um, so hopefully this will like start with everything off Invalid syntax, what have I done? Ah, I've been off for Christmas, haven't I? So um, we want to compare that, we don't want to assign it. That would be silly. Right, so we've now got that and it's off. So when I press it now, oh, we get a local variable reference before assignment. What am I doing? What, what, what am I doing other than toggle the LEDs? All right, what have I done here? <laughs> what have I done here? That's a very good question. Do, do, do. Let's see. Actually, we can do this more efficiently anyway. Let's do this differently. We don't actually need to keep this because we can use the matrix to keep the state of the matrix. So the here's in here, right? We have this get pixel color, yeah? So we could use that instead and just figure out what the state is. So I don't know why I went down this route. Okay, so let's do current color equals a dot get pixels, get pixel singular color. And because we're setting them to all the same, yeah, we just need a single number. We can use any number, so we'll just use the first one. Zero. Right, so let's have a look at what that looks like really quickly. Uh, import atom, and then we want uh, create a matrix device, and then we want to do a set them all to sixteen naught naught. Right, so they're all 
on and then a dot get pixel color i guess we'll get a top of back yeah okay so we can expect that to be that so what we need to do then is change this to uh, if it's red set it to like green and we don't need that otherwise set it to red and we don't need that so that's actually simplified things a little bit we're using the the state of pixels to um to you know manage something right so after matrix pixels color Da, 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 da. Let's run you, see if I've still got a problem. No, okay, so now we've got red, green, red, green, red, green. We don't need that intermediate variable for remembering things. So we've got a button that works pretty nicely here and it's working with a callback, so we don't need to write any polling code or whatever. It looks like we could also just get the button status here as like a one-off thing if we did want to poll for something you know to write a, a while loop that's doing something checking the status of the button but the callback's kind of nice and tidy it's a a nice event driven thing so we've got a button and we've got leds we've got input and output so that's all good so what was i going to do next was i was going to start messing around with um connecting to Wi-Fi and doing something. So amazingly for like $15, this device has this stuff and the gyroscope and it also has Wi-Fi. Um, and additionally, Matt says, adding the, the XY method would be helpful. So I will just write myself a note to try that. Never contributed to MicroPython before, but I can give it a go. So. Um, I will try that out and, um, and see if we can do that. Right. So this device here also has uh, Wi-Fi. So if we do go down to the raffle here and hit the stop button. And remember when I did this, it actually is part of the help of MicroPython. It shows us how to use some of the, uh, the features of MicroPython that are hardware specific, but also it shows us how to import and use uh, Wi-Fi. So I am going to clean all of this code out of the way, and we are going to have a go at connecting to Wi-Fi. But first, let's have a look at what we're going to do with the Wi-Fi. So we are going to mess around with something called Cheerlights, which is a project for it's kind of like a good IoT starter project. If you want, if you've got a device and it's got any sort of LEDs that can do multiple colors, so any of these sort of um, Neo Pixel type things, then you can use Cheer Lights. And it is a fun way of just getting a project done really, really quickly and also being part of a community. So, what Cheer Lights is, is it's well, let's just read the thing here. It's a global network of synchronized lights controlled by you. So everybody that is a Cheerlights client, so subscribing to Cheerlights somehow, if you tell Cheerlights, set Cheerlights to red, every currently connected Cheerlights device in the world will change to whatever its implementation of red is. And there's different ways you can set the things. Uh, they have a Discord server that we'll be using. And they have um, an API and they have MQTT, which is something else we'll be using. So we're going to try and do some cheer lights with MQTT for this little device. And that requires a network connection. So I've got to get it connected to the Wi-Fi and doing stuff. Um, I am going to not type all of this stuff out because it's kind of dull uh, audience experience for that. So I am going to use some code that I prepared beforehand and I'll share afterwards. I've not had time to put it in GitHub yet, but um, we'll, uh, we'll do that. So what we're gonna do is, first off, I'm gonna paste some stuff in. So we're gonna import Atom, we're gonna use the uh, 
the devices class there. We're going to import network, which is you know like regular big Python. That's the way of dealing with the network. Well, sorry, no, is that a big Python? Probably not. No, <laughs> this is MicroPython's way of dealing with the network. There's no operating system here, so we've got to establish this Wi-Fi connection and maintain it ourselves. I'm going to import time because I want to sleep around a bit. And I'm going to import something called secrets, which is a file that I'm going to create, just a regular Python file. I'm going to put my Wi-Fi SSID and password in there because those don't really belong in the code. So we've got that. And I'm going to use some code that we had already. I'm going to have some predefined colors here as tuples, tuples. Um, not sure what the canonical way of saying that is. I've heard everything. Uh, we're going to have red, green, and off. So red, again, is R16. Green is G16. And off is everything zero. And I want to use those because we've no other way. We've just got this little screen. We've no way of feeding back, especially when it's not connected to Thony or something with a console, uh, feeding back what the status of the Wi-Fi uh, connection is. So while it's connecting, and it might take a few seconds, I want it to do something with the LEDs so we can uh, we can determine what's going on. So we're going to need, uh, like before, we're going to need an atom.matrix, the helper class for this. We're going to uh, pixels, color, turn everything off. And again, that unpacks the tuple into the three parameters, RGB it expects. And then we are going to want to connect to the Wi-Fi. So that's something we're going to have to write here. Oops. So yeah, we're going to basically establish the class, turn off all the LEDs, connect to the Wi-Fi, and then we have to do something. Um, I am just going to straight up copy and paste this implementation of connect Wi-Fi into here, and then we can look at what it does. So I wrote this the other day. And here we go. So what are we going to do when we connect to the Wi-Fi? So first off, we're going to set all the pixels to red. So we're going to be in like, I'm not connected. Then we are going to establish a network object thing here, turn it on. That's the network interface for Wi-Fi. Um, MicroPython abstracts this really nicely, so we don't have to worry about the details of it too much. And then we're going to connect with two values that are in the secrets, which I haven't created yet. So secrets.wifi SSID and secrets.wifi password. So I need to create this uh, thing here. So we'll copy that and come back to that in a second. And then what we're going to do is basically loop whilst the Wi-Fi isn't connected and have a bit of a sleep. And then what we're going to do is basically alternate the pixels between red and off which is everything black everything dark so while it's connecting it's going to go red off red off we could do something really cool like fade it but um this keeps the amount of code down just for a demo and then once we are connected and we drop out of this loop we'll go green and we're not going to worry too much about error handling here and then we'll have a little sleep and then we'll turn all the pixels off again so at that point, we're then connected to the Wi-Fi and we could make a network call. Right, so what I need to do is create this secrets module. So over here on the MicroPython device bit, I'm gonna right click that and do new file. I'm gonna call it secrets.py. You could do this other ways. You could have a JSON file if you wanted to. You just need to then import JSON and pass the values out. And then I need to have these two uh, thing. So what we'll do is we're going to need to give those values and what we'll do is just quickly save that and it's created it on the device here. So I don't have to keep like recreating this every time we reboot the device. That's a persistent file now. So what I need to do is just quickly um, wander off there and I am going to well let's just do it this way. What I need to do is really, really quickly remove the desktop. Let's remove the little device as well. And I just need to put in the secrets, not that 
our Wi-Fi password is a state secret, but you get the idea. Let's just make sure I've got that right. Is da 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 that da, that, da, that no I haven't actually I've got um a character wrong in there, so it's triple check because we're not gonna get a lot of feedback without writing a lot of error checking code. Okay, so that's saved on the device. Let me bring the desktop and the device back. Right, so we've now got a populated secrets file we can probably do something with. And what I'm going to do now is if we run it on the device, hopefully it will go dark, then it will go red, then it will flash. And if it's going to connect to the Wi-Fi, it will go green. So let's try it out. Go red, red flashing. Hey, we've got a connection. OK, so we're now connected to the Wi-Fi. We can do something. So we could call remote resources and you know, get data and all of that stuff. Um, so that's that part of the code handled. So that's all good. Then we need to look at how we can connect to cheer lights here. So cheer lights works with some different ways. Let's look at build here. Uh, how to build a cheer lights display. There's all sorts of examples. Uh, da, 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 da. This is maybe not what I wanted actually, but uh, you, there's a web widget. You can build it into a web page if you want to. You don't even need hardware. Um, and MATLAB and all sorts of things. Right. Maybe let's try it. Learn. So here we go. So cheer lights listens to the cheer lights, color changes on Discord, and then it does stuff with all sorts of different things. We're going to focus in on. MQTT. So, what's MQTT? I'm going to sort of quickly flip over to this, which is um, Kev's Robots, Kev McAleer, who is up in Preston in England. And uh, oh, hello, Roland. Uh, Roland is from Germany and makes some really interesting stuff. You can follow him on, we're still going to call it Twitter here. So, follow Roland on Twitter. If you want to drop your handle off, right up on here as well. Uh, right, so MQTT, this is a uh, Kev's Robots, which is a great site, and Kev has a lot of videos and streams on Sundays. Uh, but he's got a nice summary of MQTT. So if you've worked with any sort of published subscribe technology before, it's sort of similar. So basically, MQTT, you put a message onto what's called a topic, and then things that are subscribed to that topic receive the message if they're listening. and the thing that puts the message on the topic, the publisher doesn't know anything about the subscribers, so there's some level of disconnect between them. Um, it's a sort of loosely coupled system. And so one message can be received by many, many subscribers. And that's kind of how Cheer Lights works, the way we're going to work with it is we'll post something in Discord, it will publish it onto their MQTT server, and everything that's listening, so worldwide, will change colors. Um, we will see if. I don't know if anyone else watching has got a cheer lights display up and running, but um, we'll be changing the cheer lights colors and hopefully that will affect the, the little device down here and also the uh, every other one everywhere else in the world. So Kev's got a really nice uh, MQTT um, page here, which Kev's robots.com. So if you want to learn about MQTT, this is one of the many places you can go to do that. And he's got a video down the bottom as well. So um, if you wanted to see this done in video form. But basically, we need an MQTT broker address and a topic to listen to. So let's see what we've got here. Um, there are different things. We don't want things speak. We want MQTT. Here we go. Cheer lights MQTT. So let's see if we can make that a bit bigger. Right. So real-time subscription to the Cheer Lights feed. When someone changes the color, the color name and its hex value get published immediately. So that's what we want. Your device and apps will get real-time updates from Cheer Lights without asking for updates over and over. So here's the broker address, and I think that's the standard port number for MQTT. And here are the topics. They've got color if you're American, color if you're British. Uh, I assume they're the same things. Hex, and then some things for WLEDs. Um, so 
full disclosure, I played around with this earlier. So we could use like the hex values and get the RGB values and put them straight into these LEDs. What happens with this particular device is it floods the camera because it's really bright. So what we're going to do is do some transforms on the color codes so that we can see them a bit better on the uh, on the camera, basically make them a little bit duller. Uh, you could do that with some sort of diffusion. I could add like some, um, stick some car window tint over the screen or something, and then the bottom would still work. But we're just going to change the, the values like that. So MQTT, we need to subscribe to it. And then also they've provided a list of data items that we can expect to get. So these are all the cheer light colors and their corresponding hex codes. So if we said cheer lights green, it would set all the cheer lights globally to green. Um, and this is the color that you'd expect to receive. So we're gonna do some translation on that. And we can get either the color names or the color values in our MQTT message. So I'm gonna use the names. So back to the code, at the minute, what we've got is we're just connected to the, um, the network and we're not doing anything. So MicroPython has an MQTT client built into it and we're gonna use the simple version of that. So I'm just gonna import that here. So again, I've done this before. We're not like absolutely live coding this. We want it to work. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to uh, connect to an MQTT broker and we need to listen to messages. So what I'm gonna do now is down here where we've set everything up, we've connected to the Wi-Fi. We're going to create an MQTT client and let's do MQTT client. And we'll call ourselves, I have to give myself a subscriber name so we'll call it M5 stack atom. So that's my device ID, if you like, and mqtt.cheerlights.com is their broker. Uh, 1833 is the standard port, so I don't need to give it, specifically give it that, it'll default to it. And then we need to tell it to connect. Um, so th this here wouldn't establish a network connection for us. So, you know, in like big Python on the desktop, you could expect to just run something like this and the operating system provides the network. We have to handle that ourselves because MicroPython little device. So once we're connected, we can, a bit like our button press, we can set a callback. So let's do mqtt client dot set callback, which is something we want to do when we receive a message. And we want to do show cheer lights. So we'll, we'll write something called show cheer lights. Cheer lights and we need to do that later. And then what we need to do is tell the MQTT client what topic or topics we're interested in. And we want to subscribe to uh, something called color. We use the American spelling, but we could use either. And then I'm just gonna do that because these this client doesn't bother encoding, decoding stuff from strings, I guess for performance and lightweight reasons. So you could have any sort of data in there. Um, I think this expects a, a byte, which is what we've got here. So I actually thought when I first did this, that this was kind of that, you know, and it would just subscribe and listen and, and run as a callback. What I found was, I actually had to do essentially a little bit of a polling type thing here. So I needed a loop because I wasn't getting any messages when I started doing this. Um, so we'll have a go to sleep for one second and then MQTT client dot check messages. Um, should I have to do this? I don't know. This is what I did that, that I got to work. I was kind of expecting this would handle this sort of thing for me, but apparently not. So, okay, so we've got logic here that will check for messages. And then what we need to do is do something with the messages. So whenever we get one, it's called show cheer lights. Show cheer lights kind of doesn't do anything. So the way these callbacks work is we get a topic and we get a message. So the topic is 
whichever topic fired the callback. So we could be listening to multiple of them. We could use the same callback for multiple of them. So this would let us do uh, you know, if statements or whatever in the code to handle them differently. We've only got one topic, but we'll, we'll still do that. So let's just first off have a look at what, if anything, we're getting. Print the topic and the message. And give that some space. And let's see what happens when we run that. Hopefully, good things happen. So it connected to the Wi-Fi because it went green, and then nothing's happened. It's gone quiet. So how do we create a message on Cheerlights? So we're going to go to Discord. Let's start up Discord here and go to the Cheerlights Discord. So here it goes. And Cheer lights. Hey, so I'm doing a live stream. I posted about this on the Cheer Lights Discord. So anywhere in the Cheer Lights Discord, they've got a bot, and we can do type in Cheer Lights like this, and we get this menu back. So we can either get or set the color. So if I do set the color, I get this little menu for what colors do I want, and let's pick. Ah, somebody else already did it. Look. So over here, we've already received color and yellow as bytes in our callback. So someone else set cheer lights. Um, if you're watching and you can do this, feel free to do it at any point. And, and oh, this is timed out now. So let's do that again. So I'm going to do cheer lights, set color. I'm going to go with blue. And you'll see we've got another message, blue. So. Everybody in the world that's listening to this MQTT or calling the Cheer Lights API because it's all in sync, uh, they've just gone from yellow to blue and their lights should be yellow or blue. So if you've got Cheer Lights out there, you should be seeing this. But what we've proven is that our, um, our callback's working. So great. So what we need to do now is take this string, and remember the reason I'm using strings and not the hex values that would be easier to create LED numbers from, is I want to use smaller numbers. I mean, I could do some division. But I want to control what color appears on the LEDs so that you can see it on the camera more easily, because the LEDs are very bright. So let's get rid of this. So what we really want is we've got um, message is the color so we we kind of just want to translate message into a specific color so i am not going to uh, bore you with typing all of that out but what i want to do is create an actual python string out of that so we use decode there to do that and then for each possible value of the colors so every color that was on the uh, the cheer lights page over here all of these, we need to provide an RGB value. Um, again, this is a bit of a verbose way of doing it, but it works with this display on the camera. So I'm going to paste all of that in, and then we'll look at what that is. So really, it's just a really naive, uh, if the color is red, then 1600. If the color is green, then 0600, and so on. And what I did off camera before this was worked out representations that show up OK on the camera, on this display, um, in this light condition. So the other thing is you probably don't need this. You, you'd, be, uh, you'd be fine to just use the hex values that come in on one of the other channels. So I'm going to stop that code now. And what I'm going to do is run it again and we'll see that's it connected to the wi-fi because the device was still running nothing's happening now up oh, somebody beat me to it so somebody set cheer lights to blue that wasn't me and it's gone blue and everybody in the world should be blue now so if we go to discord and they only let you do this every 30 seconds which is fair enough let's do cheer lights uh set the color and let's go with, I like orange, let's try orange. So now we've got orange. Um, so our little $15 device here in what, about um, how long we've we been talking about this? Just over an hour. And partly that was me just talking about 
other stuff as well. We've managed to write some code here that is what, it's pretty naive code. It's only 71 lines. We could certainly make this a lot more efficient um, and maybe have some sort of better lookup dictionary or something. We could put all of these in a dictionary, right, and then just use the key values. And so, so this could be tidied up a bit. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Uh, I will take a note because otherwise I will forget to do that. Cheerlights to dictionary. I'll try and do that for the next stream on this. Um, and we've got something now that's connected to a global network of, of lights. So, you know, there's lights all over changing and all sorts of things. So, yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to cover today. The last thing I wanted to do was just, if I hit save on this, command S, so I bailed out of doing this earlier because we weren't ready. And then if I hit save it on the MicroPython device, oh, it's, it's busy, it's running something. Stop the program first, there we go. Right, now let's save it on the MicroPython device. I've got secrets.py, let's call it main.py, and okay that. So what will happen now is I can unplug this. We can come back to working with this later on the next stream or whatever, and we'll still have the code on there. I'll make the code available on GitHub too, and I'll update the, the video link and so forth. But because this main.py is now on the device, what we could do is just unplug it and plug it into something else. So we could plug it into like a phone charger or something. And anywhere that it can connect to the Wi-Fi it's configured to, it will just now start showing cheer lights. It doesn't need to be connected to a computer or Thonny or you know have anything controlling it anymore. This is now like independent. So if we just run this again one last time and let's see what's going on with cheer lights. So it's connected to the network. Uh, it got set to orange. So let's do do this again and set color and is anyone going to beat me come on you can beat me you can beat me uh, maybe not all right i'm going with green so now we've got green um and as you can see my my color versions show up okay on this camera at this zoom level so i did practice that and mess around with it beforehand but yeah that was everything that i had for today so i am going to remove that and We'll see this device again on here. Um, and if I get good, maybe we'll see the second one and we can do something with the two of them. But um, what I want to do was mess around with the, uh, the gyroscope in here. So we can do something where we twist the device around and different things happen. And I've done a bit of research into that. I've found that there is a nice class that handles that sort of stuff. So we can take that and, and use it. And Matt, because Matt said boards can have a fair bit of custom code, if we get somewhere with it, I might look at trying to put that into the, the M5 stack class so that you, know, you just install MicroPython and then you've got both that method I was thinking about to do LEDs at XY coordinates and also maybe the ability to deal with the potentiometer because the boards are fixed configuration, everything, you know, this comes with all of this pre-made and pre-wired, these LEDs are always on the same GPIO pin, the accelerometer is always on the same GPIO pin and I'm not going to well, let's try and overpromise, underpromise, overdeliver, overpromise, underdeliver, whichever way around. Um, this thing has also got a that white thing there is a Grove connector, which is a way of connecting a whole load of different sensors and things that usually operate over I squared C, I to C, or whatever else protocol. Uh, in a standard way, so I've actually got a kit with a load of Grove sensors in from a previous set of live streams I did with a Raspberry Pi Pico. And what we might do is see if we can, number one, mess with the built-in accelerometer. So everything you get in your $15 little tiny device, which is amazing value of money. Um, everything you get in this without having to buy or plug in extra things, then see if we can plug in like a growth thing and maybe 
I don't know what I've got. I think I've got temperature, humidity, light. I don't think I have a noise sensor. Uh, maybe a potentiometer. So we, I'll see what we've got and what we can do. But anyway, you can expect the next thing to be uh, the, the gyroscope potentiometer on here. When's that going to happen? Uh, it'll be sometime on Monday. I haven't scheduled when I'm going to do that yet, but um, it won't be tomorrow too busy. So it'll be Monday at some point. So, yeah. So thanks for following along with this. I feel that worked reasonably well. And we've got, you know, something connected to Cheerlights. So if you're interested in Cheerlights, go and have a look at cheerlights.com. Uh, join the discord they're a really helpful community and also just you might find that you've already got it so if you have any of like these Pimeroni unicorn devices they come in three different sizes uh cheer lights is part of the example code for that that sort of ships with the device so that and you don't even need a physical device you as we saw you can use a web page and put a you know, widget into a web page and have it call the API and so on. So, yeah, chill lights. It's a lot of fun. Right, that's enough of this. So, um, I will be around. I'll be back on Monday at some point to be determined. Best way of finding out would be subscribe on YouTube or whatever, or actually just follow me on. We're still going to call it Twitter. So, follow me on there and I will announce all of that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go and uh, make some more coffee and think about doing a pull request on MicroPython, see if I can figure that out. Um, all right, take care now, bye.